Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back office teardown lab. Now, I'm a little bit late with this. Although I do have another one of these which hasn't been torn down, I've already pre torn this one, but I thought it was so interesting I would kind of open it back up and share with you what's left because I actually opened it up and removed the guts because the batteries had leaked and the PCB was pretty nasty and not very useful. But I thought that the whole device itself would live on in another form and I'll show you why. Surprisingly well made these Space Invader things. If you if you go to a car boot sale you might find one and if you do find one buy it if you get it maybe four quid or something if you're lucky a pound. They are surprisingly good fun. Now this one wasn't in great condition but it was in okay condition. And the, I actually got one before that was in amazing immaculate condition that cost sort of 50p. So you really have to shop around. There's nothing too much to see on this back panel. I don't want to turn it over and drop all the screws out because what I want to show you is in this portion. So you can see it's void of a motherboard or any kind of board because I've ripped it out and that's gone tonto, but there's, there's the switch for the power. And the original unit was a Space Invader game. You plug it into your television. You have your DC jack, which again has gone. So that's pretty standard. Any old DC jack can fit in there if you want one. I can't remember what was in this corner. Oh, probably the cable that came out to plug it into the television. So you have actually four buttons. You can hear that clicking. It's actually a Microsoft joystick, menu button, and a reset. And if you flip over the board, see the power switch there that's great you can just wire that how you like now these buttons are leaf buttons and actually they're all independent so you've got four separate buttons that are quite usable here you've got two buttons at the top if you consider the reset a button but you know menu and maybe one other there was an led hole the led's gone now or have re ripped that out as part of the pcb and here can you that's a proper micro switch joystick and what you actually have is four micro switches arranged in exactly the same way as you'll find in high-end arcade sticks. So I'm going to open that up and I'm going to be quite careful because I want to reuse this and I don't really want these spilling everywhere. Now the benefit of this joystick is that it's actually of a quality worth keeping. You, you might even be able to remove this hole. In fact, I'm, yeah, I'm actually quite sure of this. You can actually, if you wanted to, remove that whole module and put it into your own cabinet. If you, <laughs> might be a kind of a tedious way of doing it. In fact, I think I'm inadvertently unscrewing it right now. Look how long, these are very long screws. So I think this is removing this. I was just trying to open the lid. It is removing it, look. It's amazing that they actually bothered to use an actual real module. So for me to show you the micro switches, I just have to undo, let's get this tape off. There's four clips here. I'm not going to undo the circ clip on the joystick. I don't want to take that out. Ah, oh, there we go, the micro switch, there, yeah, popping out. Let's just work this lid, there we go. Just to show you how it works. So you see you've got these four captive micro switches. I can try to hold them in place. There we go, they are captive now. Then as you turn the joystick, see how it just touches the contacts? And it's nice and simple, really. Really hard wearing. I mean, micro switches are made for probably tens of thousands of cycles. Amazingly, that seems to have gone on quite easily. Just one is not happy. One is not happy. Come on. There we go. Might just pop those four screws back in, don't want to lose it. 
So looking at this bezel here is actually screwed on from underneath, but it doesn't really serve any purpose other than aesthetically. So if you want to get the actual stick itself out, just prise a screwdriver in here and pull that circlip straight out. And then you can recite that whole thing. You can even use this plastic as a template to how big to drill your hole in your little arcade cabinet. Right, now the main reason I want to show you this, it, it won't work for this example, but you might know I like playing with these Raspberry Pi 3s. And they do a thing called a Pi Zero, which may or may not work. I, I don't know how that, if it has an HDMI out, how that all works. You might have to wire it in by hand. But if you can, in essence, get this into this box or one of its similar things, I mean, you can get Android things that are very slim, that are slim line in pens. This would make a really cool TV game, especially if you can get a lithium cell and a battery. Now, when I say lithium cell, I don't have one to hand, but you know those battery supplies that you can plug into your phone? They're called power banks. Power banks make great power supplies for projects because you can plug this into your Raspberry Pi via its connector, mount that in there, and on the port here, put the wire that goes to your power bank charging port, and your power bank contains all of its own internal circuitry for charging and keeping it alive. And then that will give you a, a quite nice power supply without having to worry about battery controllers or anything like that. So I don't rightly know how I might fit something like this in this particular case, because if you look here, I know you at the bases, I don't want to pick up the base, but the base comes here, it's just wedge shaped. You could maybe 3D print something that would take this off. <laughs> or really, if you were that way inclined, you could just get a plastic project box. Oh, in fact, a metal one. Here's one Sit happens to be sitting here. Something a bit bigger, plastic one, and maybe just bond the joystick onto the box. So you've got this nice plastic joysticky bit, and you've got a huge box underneath to mount your Pi and batteries and everything else, It'll give you a nice stable base. You've got yourself a really simple way of controlling it. I mean, something you, you were sort of saying to me, Andrew, Andrew, just take, take this and put this on this box and make this the arcade box. Yeah, you're gonna lose these four buttons and as well as those buttons. And then you're gonna say, Andrew, Andrew, just get some other buttons. Yeah, okay, so I have made some other things like this for playing Elite Dangerous. These buttons aren't very good as arcade buttons. Actually, they're not too bad, but they're a bit too firm. These are LED illuminate, quite stiff buttons. And look, there's the controller that I made for this. So you can just play around, do what you want to do. But if you need a good source of a joystick and you don't want to play the Space Invaders game anymore, or the Space Invaders game is broken, try this. You can use any other TV games. Please feel free to comment down below and click subscribe if you'd like to be updated when I make these videos. I'd love to hear from you. As ever, thank you for watching. For those of you that are interested, this is the actual PCB. I found it. it, still has the power jack on it and the LED. It's a 21 megahertz system and lots of blobs. And I can tell you one thing, this big blob is almost definitely going to be the CPU blob. And this ickle blob here, who knows? I think it's gonna be the controller or the TV, probably the TV controlling stuff. And this blob is gonna be the games because quite cheekily, quite obviously, you can see that there's the footprints for a RAM chip or a flash chip or a ROM chip, any kind of memory chip, but these are the standard footprints. If you look inside a pen drive, you'll see those. And that's just them saving it by blobbing it down. Other connections, all these are the various connections for the joysticks and the buttons. Video. There we go. Bye.